Good morning. Welcome back to the shop. My name is Brett and you're watching News for Aircraft. It's 7.20 in the morning and the shop is a mere 91 degrees. We're going to uh, get to building a new airplane today, so uh, let's get started. Show you the workspace. This is what we got. Going to need an additional hot glue stick. Have that at the ready. This is a rather simple, built and designed as a uh, RC airplane primarily, but it probably could be equipped to fly uh, FPV. Um, but this is a uh, simple wing. I like airplanes like this, small enough, keep it in my car, take it out, go fly it when you find a park along your route that looks nice and you got 10-15 minutes to kill. Um, I know the bulk of my FPV airplanes fly off of uh, lithium ion. This airplane, in order to meet sub-250 requirements, is a bit of an aberration from that in that I do use lipos. The reason being, I just happen to have a couple of them laying around that fill the uh, weight requirements nicely. Uh, I'm looking at building 18 350 packs, um, but I've been having stock issues finding those. So, anyway, it's something I'll get around to it. We're doing the uh, traditional uh, fold-over KFM wing that I do. And uh, as with some of my other airplanes, and again, it's, it's more for the aesthetic than the aerodynamic, um, we're going to invert it. There we go. A little bit of glue in there. Just want to make sure that leading edge is, uh, and when I say leading edge, it's actually going to be at the trailing edge of this fold line, but you have good bond holding that aft end down. So again, I use this ruler just to slide into place, help me put even pressure. Holding the main portion of the wing flat as I make my fold. Grab some of my weights. I can transfer some of the load from here. And we'll give that a minute or two. Looks like this side is uh, in good shape. It's always time for a little coffee. All right. That should uh, probably be good. Let's start pulling our weights. Good closeout, looking at the uh, at the aft line of the, the trailing edge of the fold. So let's move into the fuselage. Fuselage is uh, relatively simple. This is a new design. I'm kind of somewhat proud of this, as it is a uh, it is a single piece. You'll see what I'm talking about. We'll make some breaks on the fold lines. and including the nose segment. Bring it over. See, I didn't pull my sticker. There we go. And we'll fold these two pieces in. Same thing. Secure a little weight on there. And give it a moment for a little bit of coffee. So the fuselage is doubled over like this. It adds a little bit of rigidity. And as this is an airplane that I found uh, 
you know, when you're doing early center of gravity testing, uh, you'll put it down on the nose. Doubling it over like this gives it, uh, you know, remarkable added strength. Um, originally, I had these cut as separate pieces that I would align, but then I just thought, why not simplify it more, make it into a single piece, and uh, just do the fold line technique you just saw. Now, a little bit of glue on the underside, along this line, along there. We'll bring these two sides up. Same thing. Couple of weights. These, if you press them in at the uh, base, they'll keep everything nice and square. A little weight just to keep everything touching down. And for the nose, Keep pressing each segment aft. Actually, I want to keep uh, figuring out how to get my weight on there. I want that top piece flat. There we are. Okay. We're going to let that cool for a minute. Um, this is the challenge with this airplane, as you can see. We're down to uh, not a lot of parts. That's what we got. So I think we can start to disassemble our uh, bracing structure. Actually, I spoke a hair too soon. Some of that is still a touch, uh, a touch soft. Give it a minute. Again, have a little more coffee. Give you a sweeping flyover of this. Not that. Come down. So, as you can see, it is just a very simple double-folded fuselage sidewalls coming inboard in order to uh, give the, uh, your fuselage the shape and the necessary structural braking. Um, so, braking? No. Structural support. There we are. Come back around. There we go. All right, this uh, should be ready. Feels right. Let's come back to the wing. Okay, integrate some servos. These are uh, wiring pass-throughs. The uh, little dent shows you where the, uh, the wire will pass through the wing. So the servo is marked for its direction. So for example, this will come in here. Snug fit. Same thing, the servo will come in here. Snug fit. Take these wires into those channels, just like that. Take these wires into the channels, just like that. I'm going to pass the wire up through this hole. Same thing, pass the wire up through the hole. This is my uh, left-hand servo. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mark it with a piece of tape for now. Just so I have an idea which one is uh, left side, right side. 
um, you'll get an understanding why this fuselage ends up being a little compact. So at this point, flip it back over, wires out of the way, spring the fuselage on. Fuselage is in. Line that up visually. And we'll put some glue to keep it in place. I'll raise you up so you can see a little bit more. Oh, I had a wire jump out. We can't correct that though. Pull this back along where it belongs. You know, you build this thing a, a dozen times and then you put a camera on and you have a problem you've never seen before. It's the joys of live television, folks. All right, we're in position. So, press that in. Same thing. And now I'm going to put a motor mount. This allows the aft portion of the fuselage to provide a consistent width for our motor mount. So we'll put that there. And then, as we want a little extra bracing on the fuselage, A little bit of hot glue down the center line. And I'm just gonna tuck that in. Just like that. And centered and good. All right. Now that we have the uh, motor mount in position, Go ahead and put our motor in, I suppose. So, wiring will come through. The wiring here, that's a battery eliminator circuit there that's poorly heat shrunk in. That's a 20, 30 amp ESC. Um, and the motor that I'm using, that's 1407, 3500 uh, kV motor um, with a three inch 3052-3 so now um, I separate the control side all of my control wiring all my low voltage wiring or low current wiring will come through to the top so I'm gonna pull this power lead and servo lead through So one is providing the power for the electronics. By that, in this case, I just mean the receiver. And the other is the uh, signal wire for the uh, 
motor's speed controller. So otherwise, I'm going to keep my DC wiring, well, and also the AC side of the house too, free on the bottom. So basically, your high current wire is separated from your, um, your lower current uh, control radio links and antennas and everything else. Um, in doing so, you will get a much better RC signal and won't be buzzing with interference from time to time, which is kind of nice. Put my motor in, just holding it just like that, a couple of dots. Our little hot glue in there. Same thing there. Come around to the underside and I'll just put a little glue down the sides. So, see if we can get those wires to tuck a little nicer. Wires go clean. There you can see everything for the uh, RC link coming through at the top. So here comes a uh, little wiring. My uh, remember always put your ground line aft. Um, so channel one will be the motor. I have a piece of the tape on the uh, left hand servo, so that'll go in my next enumerated slot. My servo from the opposite side, same thing. Make sure we have the ground line aft. And then our power coming in from our uh, battery eliminator circuit. I'll just plug that in all the way at the end. So you can see everything's plugged into that ELRS receiver. The um, so I'm going to try and keep all that wiring up there. Probably double this around like that. And let's uh, provide some bracing for the airplane. In doing so, we have these alignment marks here and here. It's a bold move. I'm choosing to do both simultaneously. So we'll bring my step on the bottom. Slide that into place like that. Move him over just a hair. Slide that into place like that. And those are aligned. Let's uh, put on some, these are the uh, wing tips. There's one, I'll use a brace here. Slide it over so you stand a chance of seeing it. The front end just lines up and there's index mark marks at the back so you can get it as level as you can. And if my math checks out, and if not, it'll be corrected with the next build. Um, the airplane. Should be happy to rest as such. Now. Take this opportunity to uh, actually, I'm going to put some additional glue on these wing fences.
Those are in good shape. Let's close out my uh, aft equipment bay. I think that should be about right. What I want to do is I want to make sure, and for now I can tuck this in, that, that and this closeout are somewhat snug. So, we'll see, just like that. Pull one of these. Get that alignment as such. Just gonna hold that down with fingertip pressure. And um, the antenna will live in there. Just like that. To insert our flight control horns. I had a second one. There we are. Some days everything just runs away from you. Same thing. Insert that. Um, for the sake of sake of aesthetics, apply a little pinch to the leading edge of the vent inlet, which is a dual purpose latch. I'm going to put just a tiny speck of hot glue back here. As with everything in my life, this is experimental. Um, subject to change. So a tiny dab of hot glue and these are uh, hold downs. So with any luck, they slide in like that. And this, whoop, they're still a little wet. Let me uh, hold off on that for a moment. I think we can uh, install some control horn, or uh, control rods. Let me uh, break a elevon. Break an elevon here. So, um, to show you. Get this guy on here. There's the other uh, put a little glue on the holding the servos in place. Show you what I did there. 
little glue surrounding the servos. We can, uh, this aft fairing, we can push that down, put a little glue there, hold that as such. Let's see the best way to grip it. extra. But as you can see, That's it. The airplane is built. It's uh, pretty straightforward for 26 minutes. Um, what I'm gonna do also, I'll put a line of packing tape over the front uh, to protect the nose. A Little bit of hot glue here and there, touch up some of the uh, joints just to keep everything in place. Um, but otherwise this airplane is uh, pretty much in good shape. These are reference points for center of gravity. I think I'll move those to the underside. Um, these are index marks. The dot is a, uh, you can see in there, that dot is a takeoff trim and trim neutral position uh, for reference to your flight controls. So while you're setting sub trims and getting things set up, um, basically if you have it, this one's pretty close. If you have that Elevon aligned with that dot, you end up with a pretty good takeoff trim position. Um, the other, uh, marks to give you an idea where your uh, center or your control sh uh, control throw should be. Um, yeah, that's the airplane. Anyway, uh, we're at 27 minutes. Uh, my name is Brett. This is Useful Aircraft. Uh, throw me a like, comment, subscribe, do the stuff to give uh, YouTube the engagement. We'll do a deeper dive in the development and, um, you know, further changes to this airframe. But uh, otherwise, uh, let's show you some flying and we'll call it a day. Appreciate your time.